Hi viewers, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to discuss about induction of labor. Okay. So, in the previous class, we have discussed what are the unsuccessful methods of induction of labor that were followed by uh, untrained dyes and like illegal healthcare workers. Okay. So, today we will see the exact method of induction. Okay. So, what is induction? So, induction is artificially that is like we have seen delivery is something it has to get initiated by itself. So, in case if this is not happening directly by itself if it is not getting initiated then we follow the other method that is your artificial method that is your induction of labor. So, usually induction is done after 28 weeks of gestation. Okay. So, we have many methods of induction of labor. Okay. So, first you have to remember the method of ripening of cervix. So, what is the rest ripening of cervix? So, already in previous classes we have discussed dilatation of cervix that is the cervix is going to get dilated. Before this dilatation of the cervix you have to see for the effacement of cervix. So, effacement of cervix is nothing but it is the taking up of the cervix. So, already I said like the upper uterine segment pulls the lower uterine segment that is like the lower uterine segment becomes thin and it gets dilated and it allows the fetus to come down to the lower uterine segment. So, now what is happening? this pulling up of cervix in case if it is not taking place by itself we are going to do it artificially. So, artificial ripening of cervix can be done by syntocinon drops. So, you can start with oxytocin drops so that it can stimulate ripening of cervix and sometimes it is because of stripping of membranes. Stripping of membranes it is like already in previous classes also we have discussed regarding this. So, stripping of membrane what happens? It separates the like membrane from the lower uterine segment thereby it releases prostaglandin hormone which causes initiation of labor. So, likewise you are like ripening of cervix is also taking place and then we have application of prostaglandin gel. Okay. So, PGE2 gel is applied in the cervix that is in the posterior cervix you will be applying and so that that it gets absorbed and it causes the release of prostaglandin which causes initiation of labor and it causes the softening of the cervix to take place. Okay. So, this is the three methods what we do for ripening of the cervix. So, first is your syntocinone drops and then we have your stripping of membrane and then we have the application of PGE2 gel in the cervical region. Okay. So, this is with your ripening of cervix and then coming to the induction. So, when we come to induction of labor, we have three methods of induction of labor. One is the medical method, one is the surgical method and the other one is the combined method of all the three that is your medical and surgical you will combine. So, that is your combined method. So, first method of medical induction. So, when we come to medical induction, the first thing is like the first method is your simple medical induction. So, you do not go in for a majority of drugs, you do not take lot of drugs. So, it is just with the castor oil you have to do, you have to give like castor oil enemas you will be giving. Okay. So, you give castor oil enema and then you have to give warm milk for the mother. So, that is to stimulate the uterine contraction. So, these are effective methods to induce labor. So, that is your first method, your simple medical induction. Then we have oxytocin and prostaglandin. Okay. So, oxytocin, when we come uh, to induction, oxytocin plays a major role. Okay. Then we have the prostaglandin. Then prostaglandin it is not only for uh, dilatation, it is for the ripening of the cervix also. Okay. So, 
how does this prostaglandin administer so this we will discuss okay so first you have to remember the timing of induction so when do you induce labor okay usually it is like in the term so in the term in the sense it is uh, usually at the end of the labor that is around 40 weeks you are going to induce okay sometimes you have some other reason maybe it is a previous lscs session okay diabetes you consider it is a big baby you want to deliver it little more early in in like this type of uh, special cases at that time you can induce little more early or otherwise in case if it is for maternal safety okay imagine the mother is under risk so for that you are inducing labor so in that time you are not going to see for the gestational age because like we are not worried about the baby we are worried only about the mother so anytime you can induce in case if it is for the maternal purpose in case if you are going to induce labor okay so anytime so this is accordingly so time is like in case if you want for the safety of the mother and the child you will induce only by 40 weeks around 40 weeks you have to do otherwise if it is for the maternal side then any time like that is like you are not worried about the gestational age of the mother that is with your timing and then coming to the bishop score so what is this bishop scoring okay so this is the best scoring method for induction of labor not only for induction of labor it is to tell whether this labor will proceed in a normal sequence whether this is an abnormal labor can we go in for induction all these things can be found out with this bishop scoring okay so in bishop scoring we have five areas of identification so the first area is dilatation then the second is one effacement then station consistency and the position you are going to monitor so how are we going to monitor so usually you monitor and you give scoring for your findings so when you give scorings you will be able to find out whether mother will proceed into a normal labor or like whether this is going to end up with a uh, cesarean session or some complications so first is dilatation so you will be measuring all these areas and you will score and with the scoring you will be able to identify whether induction of labor is applicable for this mother or not so first you you are supposed to assess the dilatation of the mother so here you have scoring of 1 2 3 scoring so when there is a dilatation when there is zero dilatation whether the dilatation has not started only you give zero scoring and then when the dilatation is 1 to 2 you give a score of 1 3 to 4 you give score of 2 and 5 to 6 you score 3 and then coming to effacement it is 0 to 40 percent you will give zero scoring and then 40 to 60 1 60 to 80 2 and 80 plus you will give 3 scoring and then we have station so it is minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 and 0 then finally it is plus 1 and plus 2 so already we have discussed when the uh, head is outside the cervix you have to give plus scoring okay otherwise it is like minus scoring from cervix when you enter into the uterus that is you will give scoring of minus 1 minus 2 like that you have to score and keep on going okay so this is the way you have to score your station and then coming to consistency first is the firm consistency when you are doing a pervaginal examination the cervix when you touch it has to be firm it will be hard then you give zero scoring then we have the medium medium in the sense like you can feel it is not firm as well as it is not soft it is like it is in a medium consistency that is like it is trying to ripe then you give it is one scoring and then if it is soft you have to give two scoring and then coming to the position once the head of the fetus is in the posterior direction you say zero and then if it is in the mid position where it is trying to rotate then you give mid position that is your one scoring and then anterior so you are able to see the head in the anterior position that is the head is already rotated nicely then you give two scoring okay so overall you have to score and you will find out the overall scoring so overall scoring in case if it is 0 to 5 
the cervix is unfavorable where you will not go in for induction of labor. In case if the scoring is from 6 to 13, it is a favorable cervix and you have to go in for induction of labor where the mother will proceed easily and she will have a safe normal delivery. Okay? So, that is with your Bishop scoring. And then coming to the drugs. So, first we start with prostaglandin. So, prostaglandin the first part we have said it is for the ripening of the cervix. So, it is for the taking up of the cervix. So, once the ri ripening of the cervix takes place then only you can see the improvement in the dilatation. So, you are going to start with your prostaglandin first. Okay. So, usually before you start with prostaglandin you have to provide an adequate rest for the mother. So, usually you are going to sedate the mother that is like in the night usually you will give a uh, diazepam for like for night sleep. So, she will have a complete rest in the night and early morning around 3 to 4 o'clock you have to start with the induction process. So, when you start introducing you will start with PGE2 gel you have to start. So, this PGE2 can be given in any form. The first form is the oral form, oral form of PGE2. So, what is the dosage of this PGE2? So, the drug of choice is the dinaprostrone. It is 0.5 mg you have to start. Okay. So, the starting dose is 0.5 mg and every hourly you can give 2 tablets you can give. So, to the maximum of 3 mg you can give and not more than that. That is with the oral induction. And then we have the IM or IV induction. So, dosage for IM or IV is like 20 mu grams you have to start that is your starting dose and every 15 minutes you can increase the dose to 10 mu grams. Okay? So, every 15 minutes you can increase, but you are not supposed to increase more than 150 mu grams per hour. So, that is your normal duration of IM or IV administration of PGE2. So, when you are going to do Vaginal administration it is 20 mg of PGE2 or otherwise 20 50 mg of PGE2 in a lipid base you have to give. So, either it can be given as 20 mg or otherwise it is 50 mg alpha you are supposed to administer or otherwise you can go in for your pessary administration also. Okay? So, when you are going for a administration of pessaries it is 2.5 to 5 mg you can administer and like every after 6 to 8 hours this dosage can be repeated. Okay? So, we have seen 4 routes of administration is your oral route, IM and IV route as well as your like suppositories and your pessary administration we can do. Then we have oxytocin administration. So, oxytocin can be administered as a buccal root, a nasal spray as well as your intravenous administration. So, when you are coming to buccal administration, the dosage is like you will be administering your starting dose is your 100 units. So, when you are giving an 100 units, you will be starting with an one, one tablet. So, usually the available form is one tablet is 200 units, but your starting dose is 100 units like you have to start with 100 units and then hourly you can increase the dose, okay? but you are not supposed to exceed 600 mg. Okay. So, 600 units you are not supposed to increase the oxytocin. So, that is with your buccal administration and then when you are coming to nasal administration you are supposed to administer 40 units. Okay. So, that is like rarely used and like the usual dosage is 40 units. When we are coming to IV administration you, this is the common method of administration of oxytocin is your IV administration. So, how you will administer? You, your starting dose of IV administration is your 5 units you will be administering in that is like 5 units you have to dilute in 500 ml of normal saline and you have to start with 15 drops per minute. Okay? So, once you start with 5 units in 500 ml of NS, then you have to increase the 
drops that is like 15 drops becomes 30 30 drops becomes 60 like that you have to increase every half an hourly that is like you are training up of the uterus this is the uterus is new for contraction and now again this has not like this induction is not happening naturally you are doing it in an artificial way this is your like you are inducing labor so you have to train up the uterus slowly so how you will do it like you have to start with five units five international units you will add up in 500 ml of normal saline start with 15 drops then increase that to ev like every 30 minutes you have to increase the drops that is like 15 drops becomes 30 30 drops becomes 60 like that you have to see you can wait for three contractions per minute which is going to last for 45 to like uh, 45 to 60 seconds it can last ok. So, likewise you have to train up the uterus and you will be proceeding with the oxytocin infusion and then finally coming to the surgical induction method. So, when we come to surgical induction method we have stripping of membrane rupture of four waters and rupturing of hind waters. So, stripping of membrane already we have discussed about stripping of membrane where you are going to separate the low uterine segment so that it is going to secrete prostaglandin it is going to proceed with the labor. And then coming to your like rupturing of membrane that is your four water rupture ok you have an uh, amniotomy done like with the four waters ok and then that is going to proceed the labor is going to proceed fast and then coming to the rupture of the hind waters ok. So, rupturing of hind water is like, like instead of the four water being ruptured you are going to rupture the hind water which is like going to stimulate the uterus easily for the induction of labor. So, when you want to do a hind water rupture you will be using a Drew Smith catheter which can reach the hind waters and then you will be breaking that is like you will be doing an amniotomy in the hind waters and then which is going to initiate the labor process ok. So, these are all the methods whatever we have discussed is for induction of labor. So, we have discussed about the uh, prostaglandin that is like your administration of prostaglandin through the different routes ok your oral administration, IM, IV administration, suppositories, pessaries we have seen and then coming to oxytocin we have seen the buccal administration as well as the nasal administration then the intravenous administration. Then we have come to surgical induction method where we have stripping of membrane then we have the rupture of fore water and rupture of hind waters. The combined method is the combination of all these method which is going to help the induction of labor little more faster the mother will deliver little more early ok. Hope you understood the class in case if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment box. So, till then take care bye.